up P Nation? We are in Seaside, Oregon, and we are so excited to show you what it's like in this region of America. I feel like it's tucked away. The Pacific Northwest is a place that no one talks about, but we've just been in our apartment slash hotel room for the past three days, and we haven't really gone outside. We got a little motel room right on the water's edge. Like you look out of our window and you just see the beautiful Pacific Ocean. To our surprise, so many tourists. And this is still like, it's really cold here. <laughs> It's been raining for the past three days, it's really cold, and that has not stopped anyone from being outside and walking on the sea walk. So we've just been like mesmerized by how many people have been outside. As we've been working, it's just kind of been like the perfect thing to do. Yeah, we thought the attraction was going to be like the town itself, but it really turned into just we sit here at this table that you're on, we look out the window, and we just people watch and look at the amazing view of the cliffs in the background. So let me just show you guys this view that we've been looking at. Like, look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. There's the walkway. It extends up and down the town of Seaside, and there are the cliffs I'm talking about. This is my view. I have people on swings over here. I have people walking. I have kites in the air. It's amazing. I am so excited to get out there with you guys. All right, so now that the sun is out and it's 5 p.m., we're finally going to take you outside and explore Seaside for the first time in three days. See all these pigeons? Look what they got. They got your side too. No! <sighs> Dang it! <laughs> they got my side really bad. Really bad. We were like, oh, we're gonna park out from under the awning. It's like, how are there feathers? So that we wouldn't get. <laughs> there are feathers everywhere? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that's a bummer. Got it? Can you do that? Here you go. And we're on the beach for, this is my first time. Have you been on the beach? I've only walked out here once. <laughs> We've been here for three days. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a staycation in your own room on a vacation. There you go. And we got so much work done, so like I don't even feel really? that bad. And it's been raining this whole time. Like this is the True. first day that the sun is out. It actually, it's not like two coats weather. It's just one coat weather. Yeah, and people have been walking in the rain and in the cold, and that's just like perplexing because yeah. growing up in Maryland and Texas, we got rain and then it went away. It didn't just stay around all the time. And you certainly didn't go walking in it. Yeah. For fun. But I guess in Portland in the Northwest, you just like get used to the rain yeah. and when it rains it's just like if it's sunny outside I don't, it's just been yeah. different to see people literally drenched not caring because it's cold outside right and they're on vacation so i guess it's just like <laughs> you're here you might as well do it and here are the resorts and right in the middle of the beach my favorite spot the swings that is so cool i've never seen anything like that before and at the end of this jetty is the Tillamook Lighthouse. And so there's just like so much to look at here. This is what's right out our window and I am just so happy to see it every day. So while we've been here, we've seen so many people attempt fires on the beach. Again, it's been raining the entire time. So since it's not raining, I'm hoping that tonight we get a chance to actually have a little fire out on the beach. I'm so excited. That's like one of my favorite things to do, especially like in the Pacific Northwest. It reminds me of the summer Zach and I met. We had fires out on the beach all the time and that would just be really cool to like really begin our Pacific Northwest journey with a little campfire on the beach when it's cold outside. Whoa, look at the difference. This was high tide and low tide is happening right now. There's a pipe out there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm looking at it for three days and I really want to know what it's for. Here's a mysterious pipe. We finally made it. I have no idea what this is. This seems so weird, but because there was a swing set way over there, I thought this was just going to be another little swing set. I don't know. <laughs> What is it doing? I don't know. It's, it's literally the on it though. in the middle of the ocean. This whole time, I've been like, is there gonna be a tsunami? You know, like on our drive up here, we kept on going like down to the coast and then like back up on a cliff and then like down to the coastline and then back up onto a cliff. And like we kept seeing these entering tsunami zone or like leaving tsunami zone, entering tsunami zone, leaving tsunami zone. And this whole time, like a fire alarm went off in our building yesterday because someone was cooking upstairs. And I was like, Tsunami! We gotta go! We gotta get out of here, Zach! What's the plan? Where are we going? Let's get in the car right now! What can we salvage? It was a real crisis I was having. And yeah. We need to talk about cheese. <laughs> Let's just talk about the cheese, all right? So, <laughs> on our way up here from Cres Crescent City mm -hmm. yesterday, we drove through Tillamook, Oregon. And Zach had promised me a trip to the Tillamook Creamery to taste the cheese 
and to eat the ice cream. And we unfortunately had to pass through because we were running a little late. Whatever, it was getting late, circumstances were bad. We it was couldn't actually go. closed by the time we got there. We couldn't go. Today we were supposed to go back. <laughs> I accidentally made her work too long, and so then we just ran out of time, and this is our last day, and now we so, can't go. So she did not get to tour her cheese factory. I did not get to tour my cheese factory. So today, we're going to just go to Safeway, and we're going to buy a bunch of Tillamook cheese and a bunch of Tillamook ice cream, and we are going to eat all of the cheese oh and all of the ice cream, because that's what I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna stay in Seaside, and right now we gotta go to the store and get all this because the sun is setting and we were definitely running out of time. It's only gonna get colder. So let's go! Just made it, 10 minutes down the road to Safeway. Let's see if we can find this cheese. I'm fingers crossed, because Leah's gonna be mad if we can't. This looks like it. Oh, but it's not. Okay, gonna be in trouble. We gotta find it. We gotta find it. Okay, we found yogurt. Since it is a creamery, they make cheese, yogurt, milk, and butter. Uh, Are you down for yogurt? Yeah, I want yogurt. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. We found it. Okay, but okay. like, which one? You need a whole block? Yeah. Well, we should try to get like, the good ones. So there's like, extra white, sharp white. Okay. This one. That one. This is really hard. But, so like, they only have like, sharp cheddars, and just regular cheddars. So I think we're gonna get smoked black pepper. I'm a big Swiss fan. You are? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. There you go. Yeah. Just dairy. <laughs> we have it. <laughs> all right, we got all the cheese, but we are still waiting on... The ice cream. <laughs> and we gotta get some wood. So, fingers crossed that our favorite place, Grocery Outlet, has both of these items. Perfect. Okay, Chocolate. one, step two, okay. Here we go. Step three, all together. All together. We're gonna need more chocolate than that, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. And right behind you is the wood. Let's go. We got the wood. The problem is we don't have a lighter or any kindling, so I'm gonna put my Boy Scout skills to the test. All right, we got all the stuff. We got the fire, we got the lighter, we got the cheese. We have so many Tolmuk products in this trunk. It's making me so happy. We probably spent more here than we would have at the actual creamery. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, just touched it. Oh my god, it's so gross. Luckily, they have it this time, not us. We're by the beach. Yeah. Oh, my hand feels like infected now. I don't even want to touch anything. So, on the way over here, we realized, on the way over here, we realized we don't have a, a freezer. <laughs> so, <laughs> we might have to eat this earlier than expected, which is like, I'm not sad about it. Let's go on the beach right now and eat this. He is in this pocket. Zach, you might have to reach in and get it. You can do it. I can't. All of YouTube is watching. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. oh no, it broke something. I think it's the chocolate bar. Got our spot. Got a little hole. I have no idea if it's big enough. I'm gonna have to dig. We got some kitlin. Found some random boxes that we had. So now let's see if we can do this. All right, we got our wood. We got a little shallow hole. That's really necessary because you want wood to get under the fire because then it will start sooner. I've had many fires on the beach with Leah. Each one was a success. So I'm hoping this one is too. Okay, so you gotta use all the small logs first because they catch on fire fastest. You make a little teepee. Keep the big ones to the side, because that'll help you out later. And now we have our stack of boxes, which isn't ideal. Paper is ideal. But I accidentally made Leah throw away our Yosemite paper before we came here. So it is no longer with us. I don't think this will be enough to start it. I might have to search the beach for some kitlin, um, some little twigs. I think I found some when we were passing by, but they could also be way too wet. So who knows what's gonna happen. Fingers crossed this fire starts because we've seen like dozens of people start a fire on the beach, but they all use man's secret weapon, which is lighter fluid. And I didn't want to do that because I want Leah to know I'm a nature man. I believe you. You believe me? Kinda. <laughs> I have faith in you. Also, I think lighter fluid is cheating. 
I, it is cheating. Yeah, it is. But that's why it was invented, so that you could um, cheat the system. Yeah, I get it. You wanna go find you that kitlin? Yeah, if you want to. Oh, I don't know if this will work or not. Got it. Heading back to Zach. Do you think this will work? Oh, perfect. It was not too human. Oh, I'm not gonna far. Okay, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but before we try this out and spend a bunch of time on it, we should definitely eat our ice cream that's been melting for an hour now. That's true. Because it's not gonna be good in like <laughs> 10 minutes if it's not already. Oh, ice cream on the beach. Doesn't get any more American than this. Which one are you most excited for? Mary and Berry is my favorite. Leah's wanted cake for like ages now, so I'm glad she's finally getting some version of that, but like whatever. This is local, <laughs> this is real, this is true Pacific Northwest. Mary and Berry is where it's at. It's been so nice dog watching here. Like honestly, I know we said people before, but at our window we've had the most fun. Well, I've had the most fun just watching Leah freak out over dogs. You've been freaking out just as much. This is... Whoa, consistency is off the charts. I have not had Marionberry since I met you that summer. <gasps> Way back in 2013 and that is amazing. I wish we had a freezer. This feels like so bad that this is all going to waste, honestly. Mm. That's really good. Okay. It's just so creamy, mm. but also like whipped cream. It is very whipped creamy. Birthday cake. It's got like funfetti sprinkles on it. It tastes like a birthday cake. <laughs> I want to try. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Wow. Wow. I don't know if we have Tomodok in Texas, but we are loving Bluebell there. If this came, it could totally take over mm -hmm. because this is amazing. And because it's whipped creamy, it's like light and fluffy, like a cake should mm -hmm. be. I know, it's good. I sand in my pockets. Your flavor's boring. Honestly, I think if we just put the lid on, it's freaking cold enough out here. I'm wearing shorts, I know. But it's cold yeah. enough out here that you could just let them sit. We could definitely have them for dessert. This is really good. You should okay. dip your s'more in it. Okay, great idea. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have like literally four minutes of sun left before it dips behind the clouds forever and it's about to be oh. frigid over here. So that's why we ate the ice cream. It's happening right now. Goodbye, son. It's about to get Really cold. Is it arcing? Okay. You can just do have it. to focus. It's gonna be possible. You can do it. I'm like freaking out because it's gonna get really cold. I can smell it. You can? Yeah. Oh, that's just burnt cardboard. Well, it smells good. <laughs> hey, look who got the fire started. Ooh, it's getting cold. I don't know, you guys. It's looking pretty promising. Oh no, we already have company. How do they know? <laughs> we literally just opened ice cream, guys. That's it. You can't even eat ice cream. What are you doing? We have sesame crackers, pepper, cheddar, Swiss cheese, some deli meat, turkey, and a block of sharp. Extra sharp. Yum. I'm just happy to know that I can protect you <laughs> <laughs> in the wilderness. I'm just really happy to know that like, I can protect you. You'll be okay. I, di I didn't give up. To my, to, I did not give up. She said, D would you like some assistance? And I said, yes, but for Leah, with anything she does, that means for her to take over, whether it's cooking, campfires, it goes driving, like, it, goes it like literally this. doesn't matter. You need some help? And then she's like, <laughs> step out of the way, please. And I'm like, okay, okay. Whatever makes you happy. You need some help over there? Do you need, do you need some help with that fire? <laughs> now it is time, now that we're next to the fire and the wind's blowing that way, to finally have this taste test because we didn't go to Tillamook Cheese Factory. Nope. You didn't get to see your cow. Nope. But you're having the cheese <laughs> right down the road. We're only yeah. 42 miles away. This is actually so. way better because like... Is it? Yeah, this is way better. Okay. I mean, we're, we, got, we got the yogurt, we got the ice cream, <laughs> and we got the cheese. Like, I'm more than happy with this. This is way, way more authentic. Oh, thank you. 
I'm the yogurt guy. So this private selection yogurt that was like $4 for this little thing. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. 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 Is what I'm looking forward to. Blueberry with vanilla. Mm-hmm. So tastes good. like yogurt. I'm sure you watched this video and you thought everything was gonna be cool. This honestly tastes like yogurt. I think the reason it's so expensive is because it has 13 grams of protein without having any, and yeah, without having any whey protein or anything. It's just natural protein, so. Locally sourced dairy, that's why. Mm. Oh. I mean, that actually tastes. That tastes different. You know how we were in Bulgaria and they had their own you know how? Okay. We need a flashback to this <laughs> clip because when she tried whatever she's talking about right now. <laughs> wow. It's sweet. It tastes like wheat, but also like meat. I know that rhymes. I didn't mean to say that. I, it, honestly. I'm just saying that. Yogurt has a different flavor everywhere in the world. Oh, okay, I get you. Yeah. And in so Bulgaria, like, it happened to taste like? Poop. Like cow manure. But we like love it, Bulgaria. It's tasted like cow manure <laughs> smells. But it didn't, obviously I've never had poop before, so I don't know if it act, like tasted like poop, but it smelled and tasted like that. And this does not taste like and that. And it does not, this does not taste like so that. So that means it's a win. Okay. It's a big sure, win. Sure, what is But it has one? like a different flavor. Next. This one's this is really good. super watery. Because it's not the fancy one. This is what I'm talking about. What? I've never had this much lemon flavor in something. Is it natural? I don't even care if it's natural. This is like a lemon circle. What's it called? What do you always say? Lemon circle? Oh, this is like a peach ring, but a lemon ring. Mmm. <laughs> yes, this is very American yogurt. It's not Greek yogurt. It's super light and fluffy. And yeah. the lemon really shines out in it. I've had way too much of that. You know, it's really funny that we decided to show you guys dairy products, which have to be refrigerated, in an environment that is frigid. Yeah. My nose is running. Me too. We've already eaten ice cream. We just had cold yogurt. We're about to have some mm. cold cheese. We should definitely have brought some warm tea to warm us up, but this is Didn't where we are. Didn't think that far. Listen, we're on the go. We're on a budget. Right, let's talk about cheese. <laughs> so I'm actually wish. Okay, I don't, I should have had a palate cleanser. <laughs> Swiss and cherry yogurt together, oh my god. Are good? No, because I'm just tasting cherry Swiss cheese. Cherry Swiss cheese? Yeah. Swiss is just so mild. Like it tastes like Swiss. Swiss. This extra sharp cheddar though, it is so salty and so intense and so creamy at the same time. What do you think? All of those things. It's we really delicious. like Dubliner. That's like yeah. This might be better than that. Super hard and this is really soft. Yeah. I think we might find a new favorite. I have found a new favorite. I can taste the tanginess from the organ cows because they're so different from Bulgarian cows. It's completely different. <laughs> Okay, last one's pepper. Okay. Pepper. Pepper. This is really pepper. interesting. I don't, I don't know if I've ever had pepper cheese. This is good because like, we usually don't buy salami because you don't like salami, but this is like giving me that salami. Interesting. I was going to say it's giving me pepper turkey vibes. And now instead of having the turkey being peppered, you can just have the cheese being peppered and, and it the serves, turkey on the side. it kills two birds with one stone. This is good. It's actually that actually that enhances uh, the uh, charcuterie board. Mm -hmm. Ding. Tillamook is delicious. I've never bought so many Tillamook products in one go. Why not? It's always too expensive. Mm. You're right. And I don't have that like emotional tie to it. You know what I mean? Like for you and Bluebell in Texas, it's an emotional tie. <sighs> so hard. I'm not from Oregon, and you're not from Oregon, so like we're like, eh, Tillamook, yeah, it's a thing, it's a thing, but like, 
we're here. So we are, we're making it happen. This is like an emotion. It is like an emotion. So we didn't see the creamery, but we're sitting on sand that came down from the Columbia River all the way from Canada on this beautiful beach. The sunset is amazing. The fire is amazing. This meal is amazing. And I'm just so happy to be in Seaside, Oregon. It wasn't really on our map before or like on our radar at all. Back when we planned to do like a West Coast tour, I was like, let's stay in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and then I don't know, maybe we'll go back up to the peninsula where we met on the Olympic Peninsula. Mm -hmm. But Seaside was just a town along the way until I started looking into it and found out that it's got a rich history and there's lots of stuff to do here. So we were actually going to stay here for a month. So our little three day trip is not long enough. A month wow. definitely would have been what we needed here. But this has just been so pleasant. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to sit and eat our entire dinner in yogurt and ice cream and, and cheese, cheese. <laughs> this doesn't go to get okay it's a creamy tour whatever i'm so excited i'm so cold it's whatever all right we're gonna watch the sunset and then cut to the s'mores all right now time for our makeshift this is a horrible idea the metal's <laughs> gonna get really hot and then you're gonna be burnt listen we, it's all we have okay all we have, I've protected by this little thing of cardboard, okay? Oh, you got the cardboard on there. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. She is a Girl Scout, guys. <laughs> Perfectly toasted, and I'm not burnt. I don't know about you, but like burnt marshmallows is a no, is a no-go. I can't eat it. Uh. Okay. okay. All right. I love it. Are you serious? Your fork makeshift cardboard? Are, really? I'm, I'm an Eagle I'm Scout, amazed. you guys. I'm amazed. I'm an Eagle Scout. All right, and that is it. The campfire has dwindled down. As you can see, it is not lighting up our faces anymore. This has been a great night. I am so happy that you are so happy. I'm so happy. I just feel so like calm, you know? There's just like nothing to like, there's nothing like a fire on the beach. Mm -hmm. And I will preach that to the day I die. <laughs> Like, it is just the best. So now we're gonna go to sleep. We have a huge day tomorrow in Astoria. I am so excited to see the Columbia River. It's gonna be amazing. Good night. <laughs> Boom! And it's the next day. We had a great sleep last night with the ocean coming in. We are now up the beach. We can still see where we were in the lighthouse. Oh, but yeah. we have just made it to, what is this place called? Peter Iredale Shipwreck, which is just 13 minutes up the road from Seaside. It's like practically between Astoria and Seaside. And it's just this wreck that's been here for like a hundred years. And it's crazy that it's still standing. I mean, like you can still, there's, the hole is still there, at least a, a bit of it. Yeah, because the Columbia River Gorge is right up there, right? You, can, you guys can see that shadow. That's actually the north side of the river. So it's right here. The ship apparently missed where it was supposed to hit because it's supposed to get on the river, but it didn't. So now it's on the beach, yeah. and it's a very, very bustling tourist place. It's like the most people we've seen in a long time. Yeah, there's so many people here right now. And it, again, another beautiful day. This, I can't believe this has happened to us. Like the, the few days we needed it to be rainy so that we could work, it was rainy. And now that we're like ready to go out and explore, it's beautiful outside. So anyway, we're here, we're gonna check it out. Let's and then go. we're on the road. We got our professional kite flyer. Oh, it's working. So it's working. So here it is. 200, no, two stories tall. Feels old. Seems a little haunted, but not as haunted as I would like. I know this is an accident, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I don't know if people survived or if they died or what have you, but I'm sure if like the, the clouds were kind of like misty, you know, like if it was raining, this would be way creepier and scarier, but this is actually just really cool. There's so many barnacles on, like it's so old, so rusty. But this is pretty amazing that it's still here. Oh, I see it now. This is the front. Oh, it just like crashed sideways on the beach. Yeah. That's so, interesting. I, so I researched a few of the shipwrecks on the Oregon Coast. I can't remember if this is the one or not, but um, it's like they were waiting for someone to come and man the ship to go into the Columbia River. So they're waiting, right, for someone to get there. And then a huge storm rolled in and 
it like twir turned them around and when it hit sideways, it, apparently it hit with such force that all four masts like broke off. Which that's, that's kind of crazy. Not today, it's too cold for that. I think she'll still go. What do you think? We can get her back up out of the water. We can fix her up. That's crazy, that's a mess. We're like in the ship right now. I didn't realize it was this big. We're still going. We're like, I don't even know how far away from the front. But we're still going to the back and I don't even know if this is actually the back. Okay, I think this is mass number three. The back is somewhere over there. But look how big this ship is. It must have been the biggest storm like ever seen by man to get a ship this big turned sideways. Beach on the side of this gigantic beach. Like we are way up here, but it's such a gradual slope. Like I bet high tide, high tide's probably where those dunes are. And low tide is happening right now. That's crazy. I wonder how much is actually under the sand that we can't see. All right, now that we've seen this ship, we're gonna see where it was headed. The Columbia River Gorge. We're finally going to Astoria. I'm so excited. Guys, we made it just down the road. We are now walking to the mouth of the Columbia River. I am so excited. As you can see, Leah is so excited. She's having her lunch behind us. How is it so far? Delicious. Thank you. <laughs> so now we're going to the mouth of the Columbia River and all these fences up behind me are like for jetty restoration because apparently they have to redo the jetty every single year because that's how massive the Columbia River is. Unlike the Mississippi River, which is like, the, which is the biggest river in America, the Columbia River, which is the second biggest river, dumps out in one place. So everything comes here and it's moving all the time. So what we're walking on might not be here next year, but they're trying to put a jetty up to keep it here. You guys, we freaking made it. Look at this, this is amazing. This is the Columbia River. Over there is Astoria. A little peninsula, there's a bridge to go to Washington, and those mountains are over there are Washington. They go all the way over there to that little point, and then that's the ocean right there. How's that sandwich treating you? Up. Good. Mm. Whew, this is so cool. I am like so happy right now. The sand we're standing on could have come from the mountains of British Columbia all the way down through uh, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Just like this is an amazing place to be. Not to mention, behind me is where Lewis and Clark literally sailed hit the ocean all those years ago. What was it 250 years ago, 200 years ago? That's crazy. Crazy, we're standing on history. You panning for gold over here? my pan. Basically Lewis and Clark. <laughs> We've been using this pan for everything for the past week. We've had so much fun in Northern Oregon. Seaside was amazing. Our DIY Tillamook Creamery tour was amazing. The beach last night was amazing. The road up here to the Columbia River, which is like, one of Zach's favorite places. He loves the Columbia River. He's like fascinated by its history. He thinks it's so cool. And it is, it's really, really pretty. It's so big. It leads all the way to Portland, so it's really cool. We've had a few great days up here in Northern Oregon, and I think we're gonna close out the video here. So thanks for watching. Is it fresh water or salt water? You gotta taste your fingers. <laughs> what? Wait, you're not crazy. <laughs> fresh water? Salt water. <laughs> really? Yeah. I think so. What? Okay, let's try again. This is the Columbia River. I don't know, like salty fresh water? <laughs> okay, I think this is massive. Wait, wait, wait. Your hair is crazy. <laughs> Here you go. Oh. Just like to say that I made this fire and. I'm very proud of myself that uh, I had the ability and the patience and the knowledge. The knowledge. Um, it's probably because I'm an Eagle Scout. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs>